All right, guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we have Ryan from Kinetic, and he's here to talk about how you can get started using Kinetic for free, along with NinjaTrader. He's going to talk about the CME fee waiver program and how you can reduce your exchange fees uh, or avoid them altogether. I want to talk about Kinetic's unfiltered data and why that's important. We're going to look at about 500 uh, real-time market metrics, market breadth, and different symbols. Uh, going to talk about the 10 years of extensive historical data that's available with Kinetic. And also going to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and it will be posted in the usual spot on BMT sometime tomorrow. Uh, if you guys are watching the recording at a later date, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up on YouTube if you like it. Or if you're watching on BMT, then fill out the feedback form right below the webinar so I can get some feedback. All right, guys, as you have questions, just type them into the questions box, and Ryan will do his best to get everyone's questions answered today. Okay, guys, give me one second, and I'll be turning things over to Ryan. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike for that intro, uh, Big Mike, as it were, as well as the opportunity to present for you here today. I hope everyone had a productive trading day. I want to thank everyone for joining me here as we are going to talk about the Kinetic Advantage, what you can get with the Kinetic Data Feed, and all those items uh, specifically that Mike had mentioned there specifically what you are able to achieve with the kinetic data and the benefits that you receive when you are using it with NinjaTrader here as well. When we are going through the process here today, uh, we're going to be talking about, first off, uh, essentially what Kinetic is. It's going to be an introduction. We'll talk a little bit about the features that are involved with Kinetic. And then at the end of today, we're going to talk about the NinjaTrader application. I intend on spending a majority of my time working within the application itself, and you'll get to see that unfiltered versus filtered data, as well as the speed of Kinetic, how fast historical data, things like that loads. And then you can use that for comparison purposes if you are using NinjaTrader for other uh, feeds there as well. And then also for comparison purposes, we'll talk about the pricing options and the cost of Kinetic. It is extraordinarily cost effective uh, for your trading and everything that you get here is going to be included with the basic service. Uh, we'll talk about the real-time data you can get, how you can save uh, $300 essentially in real-time data if you can participate in the CME waiver program. And we'll conclude with the pricing options after we work within the NinjaTrader application. Uh, Right now, though, I like to just give a little background about uh, why you may need Kinetic and why you should consider Kinetic as uh, a supplement to whatever data that you are getting. Kinetic as a data-only provider doesn't facilitate order execution. It would be something you use in addition to executing with a broker, but you can use it if you're just using NinjaTrader for free, just for charting, uh, backtesting, things like that. So anything that I do here in the application is with that free version there as well, and you actually have access to a free end-of-day feed here uh, as well, but we'll conclude with those pricing options uh, at the end of today. But some background uh, in terms of the advantage of Kinetic is to just give you a little bit of an idea of where the uh, speed of the markets are going uh, and the costs that people are entering to go ahead and take care of that. So um, you see here in 2010 there was a fiber optic cable that was laid between Chicago and New York. The idea with this was to cut off some of the distance. It's essentially a linear line uh, directly from those two cities and the goal here was to eliminate 100 miles in, a, in distance which ultimately shaved 3 milliseconds off of the execution times. Now, uh, three milliseconds may not seem like that much, but when we're talking about uh, millions of trades being placed on a given day, it can ultimately make the difference. And you see that as well. They're doing the same thing here between New York and London, and the goal here is 5.2 milliseconds at a cost of 300 million. So you see the kind of investment that people are making in terms of being able to execute and get data from the exchanges on a on a quicker basis and the cost for 
these types of professional traders ultimately can be yours as well with Kinetic where we do all of the processing for you from the exchanges. We work with those exchanges to make sure that we can offer uh, the most uh, effective and cost efficient feed uh, for your trading. And so that's a little bit of the background of where we're coming from in terms of the speed that you're going to be able to get uh, with this kinetic feed. Um, it's not going to be quite the same. These are professional traders doing this, but it, it's uh, for you, the retail trader, a, a great resource to be able to go ahead and ultimately add it to your trading. And uh, with that out of the way, one of the other things that we do is the stability of it. It has to do with the technology that we use. Our servers are fully redundant uh, in that they're quad redundant. There's actually uh, four different sets of servers that uh, essentially enable you to, uh, if there are any issues with one server, that doesn't affect the other servers. So there's never any downtime with Kinetic. We can run upgrades to our servers without it affecting you. You can access the data at any time you want. Uh, so if you want to back test on the weekend, maybe when the markets aren't open, you absolutely we can do that even if maybe we're applying server upgrades and things like that. It's one of the reasons we do uh, fully redundant data servers. They're also professionally managed 24 hours a day, seven days a week by a team of about seven different uh, individuals uh, that are constantly also checking the data, uh, data for verification there as well, uh, as well as any issues that may be cropping up that uh, could potentially have some issues. But again, the redundancy of the servers prevents you, the end user, from actually ever seeing any of those implement implementations that may be occurring. And the other thing uh, that was done with the Kinetic Feed uh, was specifically for NinjaTrader 7. It was optimized for NinjaTrader 7. In fact, Kinetic is an exclusive provider for NinjaTrader 7. And what that means is we've essentially eliminated any type of programming interface. They're commonly referred to as APIs. Uh, the, Kinetic uh, the Kinetic Adapter is programmed directly into NinjaTrader, and that's where that exclusivity comes from. And the optimization is a result of that exclu exclusivity uh, with the NinjaTrader 7. That also has benefits for you in terms of cost, as well as that free end of day feed uh, there as well. So those kinds of technological aspects are things that we're doing, and we're always working to improve those in terms of being able to provide you with this speed uh, that you need. When it comes to how you may use this data, uh, there's a lot of great resources for you. Mike had mentioned the uh, 500 or so market metrics. We'll get back to that a little bit later, but that's just one aspect of that. And what it comes down to is for all of the markets that are going to be supported, whether it's futures data, and that's going to include primarily your exchanges like the CME, the CBOT, uh, the NYMEX, as well as the COMEX, those exchanges that are a uh, participants in that waiver program, uh, they're going to be the primary futures. In fact, a lot of Kinetic subscribers are the ones who are uh, using those exchanges. But there's also the Eurex exchanges. There's international exchanges. Another really common one is the uh, LIF exchanges that include uh, contracts like the CAC40 there as well. Uh, so there's a large amount of futures as well as uh, futures uh, domestically as well as inter. As, as well as internationally that are available to you uh, through the kinetic data. And then there's also Forex data. So in addition to the futures data that's available and the large amount of exchanges that we support, there's Forex data. And we offer two types of Forex packages depending on uh, the type of Forex trader you are. There's a basic Forex package, which is FXCM. Uh, NinjaTrader's recent addition of FXCM as a supported broker has actually resulted in uh, individuals who want the more extensive Forex historical data from FXCM. Uh, they can get that through Kinetic and it loads on a much quicker basis than what maybe what you see directly. It also is uh, much more extensive than what uh, FXCM may natively support there as well. Uh, but it doesn't ultimately affect the, the Forex prices. And so that's one benefit of the FXCM data. But there's also a premium Forex package. And that includes a lot of regional bank symbols as well as composite symbols. The variability in the Forex market means that the premium Forex may be a benefit for you if you want to view how different providers are quoting their spreads. 
and things like that, uh, you can set that up with an integrator as well to view those symbols. And so uh, we offer FXCM as well as 10.4 as the Forex providers. Uh, the premium includes both of them. The basic Forex would only include the FXCM. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the pricing options. Uh, but moving forward, we also support equities. And that's going to include things like the NYSE exchange, your NASDAQ exchange, uh, the NYSE market exchange. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, that used to be the Amex exchange. It recently changed its name, um, and that's reflected on the Kinetic Purchase page as well as uh, people are getting caught up with that. Um, but there's also Canadian exchanges like the Toronto Stock Exchange that are going to be available. Uh, equities are primarily domestic markets, but you have access to all of the, the primary domestic equity markets uh, that you can use. And so if you're trading in Ninja Trader, you can supplement whatever data your broker may have, uh, again, with that historical data or that real-time data that's available. And then those market metrics and indices. A lot of these indices are available directly from exchanges. So there's a few of the exchanges that are available um, that you would need to subscribe to. But uh, a vast majority of them are included with your basic service. And uh, the market metrics, again, are something that we include with the basic service, and we actually calculate them on a real-time basis. And we'll go over that a little bit further uh, as we go through today here. Now, all of these uh, come directly through the kinetic feed um, into NinjaTrader 7. Going back to the optimization, what that ultimately looks like, rather than kinetic being an intermediary between the markets and the application, uh, they function on a, in a similar symbiotic way, uh, thus increasing the speed of the load as well as uh, how quickly you can access the historical data, those types of things. And you'll see that when we start working in the NinjaTrader 7 application. I got a surprise for everyone once we get over there. Now, uh, the other great thing about this kinetic data uh, is, uh, in, in many cases, when we're talking about truly unfiltered data, uh, because we're talking about so many different data points, um, what it can do is it can lead to load times that maybe aren't optimal. And when it comes to the filtered versus unfiltered data, a lot of data providers may filter their data to enhance the speed at which the data is received by the end user. That can facilitate trading, but since our business is specific specifically data, we want to provide unfiltered data. And what this looks like uh, using this numeric example here is uh, every, number, every number in the sequence uh, is available as part of an unfiltered feed, whereas in the filtered feed you may be missing some numbers. It doesn't ultimately affect where the, the prices end up going, but there's not the same amount of historical data points. Maybe you have a strategy that depends on a certain number of variables in place then uh, you would want to consider unfiltered data because you're getting every single tick as it's generated by the market. Just to give you a comparison here, we have an unfiltered chart. And if you look at the time frame of this chart, what you can see here is it's about 7.30. I'm in the mountain time zone. So um, that's when the market opens for me. And then you can see here it goes to about 12.03 with the unfiltered. Whereas if we compare this same size chart uh, to a filtered chart, this actually encompasses the entire day. And in fact, the filtered versus the unfiltered chart uh, there's a there's I put a line here at where that unfiltered chart breaks off. Uh, it, if we go back here, you can see that the movement of the unfiltered chart uh, is similar to what you see at the beginning here uh, with the filtered chart, but there aren't the same number of data points. And if you look across the top, we're looking at a 100 tick chart, and this uh, particular chart was from. Uh, I believe last Wednesday, 320. And what you can see here is just the, the sheer number of data points ultimately um, that, that can have a, an effect on your trading. And uh, we'll get back to that here as we start working in NinjaTrader as well. But the idea is, is that you're getting every single tick in, at the market. Um, that, that guarantee essentially is, is for your peace of mind. You are able to understand that what you're seeing is precisely what's going on at the exchange. You never have to worry about maybe your broker is filtering the data. Um, and you can just guarantee what you're getting with the Kinetic is ultimately what's happening at the exchange. Now, with the unfiltered data, we also offer uh, historical data itself unfiltered. And what that means is there's 120 days worth of tick data. Uh, the unfiltered data 
typically applies uh, mostly to tick-based charts, uh, things like Ranko volume charts, um, just your general tick charts uh, as well. There are point and figure charts are another one. Um, I know how big my traders are big on uh, volume analysis. That would be based on this 120 days worth of tick data uh, here as well. So you're talking about about four months of tick data that's going to be available to you directly within the NinjaTrader application when you're loading these charts, uh, completely unfiltered. And so we're talking about an extraordinarily large amount of data that's going to be available to you uh, that is going to load incredibly fast when you are viewing it. But then in addition to this tick data, there's other types of charts within NinjaTrader, minute charts, um, daily charts as well. So with the minute data, we have uh, two years of minute data as a baseline. So for the less commonly traded symbols, that two years is going to be uh, your cutoff. But for more commonly traded symbols, like the CME futures exchanges, your equities, things like that, there's going to be more extensive uh, data. Uh, and then also there's 10 years worth of daily data. and so. When you're building your daily charts, you have access to uh, about 10 years for those less commonly traded symbols. But then there's more extensive historical data available depending on the symbol. Just to give you an example, uh, if you were to connect to the kinetic end of day feed, again, it's included uh, preloaded in NinjaTrader, you could view the Dow Jones Industrial Average all the way back to about 1927. Now, I don't know uh, why you would need to do analysis that far back, but that data is available for you. Um, you know, so just because I can't think of a reason doesn't mean there isn't one. And ultimately, you have access to this historical data, whether it's for back testing, whether it's for just uh, populating your charts, and then applying strategies going forward, uh, things like that. All of this data is going to be included with the basic service. So that $50 per month cost that we'll get to a little bit later is going to include all of this historical data. And it's for all symbols. It's 50,000 different symbols that are going to be supported with Kinetic um, through that range of products uh, and exchanges that we support. Now that being the case, uh, we also offer these market metrics, and these market metrics also extend uh, the same amount of historical data as well. Uh, when it comes to market metrics, the most commonly used ones are like the tick and the trend, but there's over 500 of these included, and so when it comes to your ticks and your trends, uh, what you ultimately have is your uh, this ability to be able to view individual markets like the NASDAQ, you can view the S&P 500, uh, you can view the Dow Jones specifically, the entire NYSE. So you have these, these types of market, market metrics that correspond to various segments of the market that you can use. And the best part about these is they update every single second. Uh, whereas if you compare it to other data providers who maybe update them on a less frequent basis, the idea here is uh, this speed advantage can be applied ultimately to these market metrics as well. There are a lot of people who use them as confirmation signals, like the tick is specifically a measure of the upticking versus the downticking stocks uh, within a given moment. And when Kinetic updates every single second, it gives you basically a real-time view of uh, general trends and uh, the attitudes of traders uh, on the market. And to give you an example of this, what we have here is we have our net issues one second. And uh, this is for the NASDAQ exchange specifically. Uh, the NASDAQ, yeah, the entire NASDAQ exchange is the composite, not the 100. And then we have the net issues 10 second, which is something that would uh, another provider would offer. And then we have the NASDAQ index itself. And this is actually generated by the exchange. And they typically update theirs like every 15 seconds or so. What we see here on the NASDAQ index is a precipitous drop from one level to the next. There's not really any, there's not really a, a, head, a heads up there of whether there's going to be that drop. Now, if we were looking at a market metric, say the net issues one second, we would actually see this ratio again, since it's a net issues between uh, the declining issues versus the increasing issues, we actually see this ratio drop indicating that the declining issues are either increasing, the uh, increasing issues are decreasing, or some combination thereof ultimately affects this ratio of net issues showing a drop in the overall market. And we see multiple updates to this within our 
with our one second updates and the result is is that prior to any update of the NASDAQ index we've actually been able to establish a trend within our market metric and you compare that to the net issues 10 second here and we just have a drop within the net issues much like the drop in the NASDAQ index itself there's not any any heads up in whether it's going whether that was going to occur or not um, because of the frequency of the update and so with these market metrics you can see why we would choose to offer them uh, with the consistency that we do uh, ultimately doing so is a reflection of the server technology that we use and our ability to go ahead and actually uh, do that and so uh, this also applies to uh, not just net issues but a vast majority of the uh, available 500 market metrics and for those of you who are interested in seeing what these market metrics are uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a quick link in uh, the questions area and you can take a look at that um, there at your your own leisure and you can see the the vast range of these market metrics that are going to be available to you now um, progressing though uh, the thing about kinetic and we had talked about the historical data that's available uh, for all supported symbols. If you're trading in NinjaTrader, if you're trading in NinjaTrader and ultimately uh, you say have a futures broker, all of this data that's available with Kinetic is going to be included as well. So if your broker doesn't support anything but futures, Kinetic functions as a supplement to that, and that's going to include all your stock data from major exchanges. You can add that real time, but that historical data is going to be included with your base cost uh, there as well. This also applies to the Forex. Uh, there's historical data, whether it's that comp symbol, uh, the regional banks, or the data from FXCM. All of those symbols are going to be supported historically speaking uh, as part of the basic service as well as a supplement to any data that maybe yet your broker may not offer. And so you can use that data uh, as a way of maybe gauging uh, other markets that you'd like to get into, or maybe you're holding a long-term position for uh, your IRA account or something while you're day trading futures. You can view that historical data to kind of keep an eye on what's going on uh, on a larger scale versus your, your intraday trading, uh, things like that. There's not really any limitation to how you use this data. It's really up to your trading. It's just we make it available to you ultimately with the idea that this pornocopia is going to be something Thing that uh, everyone can take advantage of and will find a use for and then those indices uh, that are available there as well and then the news is a great feature here um, you know especially now uh, with today uh, I don't know how many of you have been paying attention to the uh, bailout in Cyprus things like that you can see how things like that in news and other items may affect trading as well included with your basic service is going to be items like RTT Newswire um, PR Newswire and then Business Wire but then there's premium news services uh, fly on the walls one of them uh, AP is another one. Uh, CBS Market Watch is, is one there as well. Uh, you'll see all those listed on the purchase page. A lot of people will use these uh, if they're trading off of the news. There's a feature in NinjaTrader that takes uh, special advantage of this specifically, and we'll highlight that once we get to the uh, NinjaTrader application. And then uh, the last thing is its affordability, and we'll actually come back uh, to this once we start working with the pricing options. But what we have is that free end of day connection for daily data. That's preloaded in your NinjaTrader application here. And uh, also you have $304 worth of market data fees as part of the CME waiver that can be waived. So the cost of the CME exchange, the CBOT exchange, the NYMEX exchange, as well as the COMEX exchange, all can be waived. And in total, that's about $300 worth of exchange fees that you can uh, save the money on in terms of uh, Kinetic if you qualify and to qualify you would ultimately be trading live with ninja trader um, so for those of you who are already trading live uh, you may want to consider supplementing the kinetic data there as well uh, just because of these market data fees not to mention everything that we've discussed up to this point and then the real-time subscriptions they start at just fifty dollars per month everything that you we've talked about here those market metrics uh, the indices and then historical data is going to be included and then the news feeds there as well now, um, before we proceed, and at this point, I want to go ahead and uh, bring NinjaTrader into view. And before we talk about the pricing options, because from here, um, we'll come back to that. The very last thing we'll talk about are the, uh, the pricing options. And right now, 
uh, within the NinjaTrader application, uh, I'm not connected at this point in time. So I want to first demonstrate your our end of day feed. And the way we can access the end of day feed is if you've gone ahead and downloaded NinjaTrader, and you can actually go ahead and download that directly from uh, the NinjaTrader site which I'll go ahead and put in the room here as well uh, if you haven't done so. If you already have, what you can do is just within your NinjaTrader Control Center, you can go to File, you can select your Connect option, and then of your connections that you have available, you'd want to select the Kinetic End of Day Free Feed. You don't need to do anything to configure this because it is preloaded, and then all we do is we would select that option. Now we see down in the bottom left of the Control Center that we are connected. Once we are connected, we can go to File, we can select New, and we can choose Chart. Now this end of day feed is historical daily data, so its primary use is going to be for the uh, charting features of NinjaTrader. So we're going to select Chart here, and of all the available symbols that we have, we can actually uh, chart historical daily data. So let's just go ahead and pull up the ES0613 chart. And once I go ahead and double click on it from within our data series window, what we have is the ability to edit some settings. Uh, one of the things, and we'll get to this as we start working with the intraday data, is you can modify your period settings. Um, talk about that a little bit more. You can edit how much data you load. Because of the historical data, uh, NinjaTrader has some uh, preloaded settings. But if we want to view the entire range of 10 years worth of data, we can go to uh, change it, and we can select the custom range uh, here as well. And we can say set this to 2005 and load good solid eight years worth of data here. And then uh, just your visual settings down below uh, are available to you. You can change the labels, things like that. You can change the, uh, the price marker color. That's a really big one because what it shows you is the last traded price uh, on your y-axis. And then the uh, trade executions, these are if you're trade executing within NinjaTrader you ultimately would see uh, your entries and your exits as well as the number of contracts and the time that occurred. Uh, you can disable or enable that. And so you have a lot of flexibility in how you customize these charts. And once you've modified these settings, let's go ahead and select OK and create this chart. And what we're doing now is we're loading this uh, 10 years worth of data here. And this is uh, just the daily data uh, that's available. It's not going to include your intraday data. So if I want to say switch this to say five minutes worth of data, uh, we can go ahead and see that this is the data that I have loaded uh, in my database. And this is actually data from a filtered data provider. Uh, this is the same data that I used when uh, earlier in the uh, presentation here. Uh, this is what was generated uh, when generating that filtered chart. Now we can see the five minutes of data, and you can actually see the date here across the top at 3-20-2013, uh, as well as uh, your tick charts. If I want to view a tick chart comparative to what we saw a little bit earlier, within NinjaTrader, there's a great little tool here. If I just start typing, it'll bring up a small data series box. It's basically a very minimal version of what we just used to create the chart. But as I start typing, it enables me to change the period of the, the chart that's available. And so if I change this to 100 tick uh, by using T as, a, as the uh, type of chart interval, we'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that it doesn't actually show uh, the data at this point in time. What we would need to do is right click on the chart and select data series. And you can see by default NinjaTrader only loads three days. If we were to change this custom range back to when I have data available, again, the 20th, go ahead and select OK, and we see this data uh, that's preloaded in NinjaTrader. Now, this also applies uh, to other symbol types that are included uh, within NinjaTrader. So let's go back on to that daily interval. And you can see that I've compressed the chart. By default, it only is showing that one year. But again, if we were to right click, we can increase that to, say, 2005 again. And we can see that more extensive historical data. And we can get a, a better trend, a longer term picture of what we see here uh, there as well. Now, uh, in addition to the ES uh, data, as well as other future symbols, uh, we have access to equities data. And with equities data, much like we changed the interval on the chart here, we can actually change the, the symbol. And let's say I want to um, change this to, let's do Facebook here. Uh, I saw something earlier about how they'd hit a new low today. And so uh, you can see that, um, you know, based on this chart, it doesn't look like they actually did. Um, so maybe I was mistaken. But in any case, uh, you can view equities data uh, here as well. 
but then that also applies to your Forex data. So if I want to say you view the Euro USD, I can just type in that particular symbol uh, there as well. And what it does is it creates my daily chart and we can uh, decompress this. And the way I'm decompressing the chart is I'm left clicking on the x-axis and then I'm just moving my mouse to the left and as I'm holding that left mouse click it just increases the uh, essentially the bar width and that way it um, reduces how many bars are displayed within your overall chart window and you can adjust that. Other things you can do is left click on the, the chart axis and you can compress it on the, uh, the price scale here as well. When you do that you're using fixed scaling and you'll notice there's an F here. Uh, it's very small in the bottom left here or excuse me in the top right and we'll go ahead and uh, left click that and that returns us back to our automatic scaling. Uh, essentially NinjaTrader is going to scale this chart based on the, the highest high and the lowest low of the visible bars. So as we start compressing uh, it's going to ultimately affect the Y axis here as well uh, if we do that. But if we were to compress and then do that it's not going to affect our uh, fixed scaling. So that's another uh, feature you have uh, with these NinjaTrader charts. You have the ability to modify this data uh, very quickly as you see fit uh, for your trading, uh, especially with this end of day feed, you can just use it as a, a way of getting started, understanding what's going to be available uh, within the, the kinetic feed here. Uh, now, uh, one thing I wanted to highlight was the speed and how quickly uh, your charts load. And so I want to switch back to our 100 tick chart so you can see my historical data that I have, and we'll need to change our our start date so it accesses what data I have um, as well as the symbol so we'll go ahead and change this to ES0613 just by typing there as well and once we do that we see that historical data and this is a uh, historical data again that's loaded uh, in NinjaTrader for those of you that are curious um, you have the option of working with your historical data uh, within the NinjaTrader control center and so all of this data that loads within NinjaTrader uh, is actually some entered into the NinjaTrader application in uh, Tools Historical Data Manager and you have the ability to export this data. Let's say I want to create text files for it. I can uh, do that uh, by exporting what I have available to me. If I need to edit the data, uh, maybe I need to uh, remove an, an outline tick or something like that. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue with Kinetic, but if you're using NinjaTrader and you want to edit your data, this is actually just a good tip, generally speaking. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can actually reload your historical data for all of the, your symbols. So if you have all of these symbols um, predefined on a list, you can reload uh, all the types of data uh, that are available. Um, it's going to depend on provider. With Kinetic, though, you can specify tick, minute, day, as well as ask and bid. I'll come back to that ask and bid because that's a type of tick data. It's generated when a last traded price occurs and then uh, you can reload it all there as well. So historical data managers is a great little tool if you uh, need to edit the data that's going to be available within the NinjaTrader application there as well. So right now though I want to go ahead and uh, select file. I'm going to disconnect from this end of day feed. We're going to start working with the, the intraday feed so you can see some of the other features like the news window. Uh, the market analyzer is a really good tool for you uh, as well based on this real time data. And then you have your Superdome, uh, your level two timing sales. All of the features with NinjaTrader are going to be enhanced by this available kinetic data. So right now we want to go to file, we want to select connect, and we're going to select this kinetic feed, this real time feed. And when I select that, I want to highlight now that our ES0613 uh, chart is uh, reloading at this point in time. So essentially every single tick from March of March 20th of 2013 until today is going to be generated. And so you can see uh, how quickly that loaded there within within the chart. And you see now the the sheer number of ticks that are going to be loaded uh, directly from uh, the Kinetic servers. And this gives you a good idea of also the speed that's going to be available. What happened now is once I connected to the intraday data, it actually replaced what data I had previously from the, uh, from the uh, filtered data provider there as well with what's available from the kinetic servers. Now one of the things you can do on your charts is you can reload this historical data. So you have that option to reload the entirety of the available symbols uh, or you can reload on uh, an individual chart basis. One of the things we can also do here is we can update the symbols 
there as well. And it looks like our market is uh, going now. And that's uh, what I was talking about here in terms of the last traded price. This black flag on the y-axis tells me when that last traded price was. Um, the other thing that we have with kinetic data is if we right click in the chart and select data series is the period uh, we can select price based on. So if we want to view like uh, historical ask and bid prices, we can view those individual components as well. We select the the ask uh, price and then we'll go ahead and select uh, OK. The difference is, is it uh, essentially creates uh, a chart based on where people were asking to sell um, based on when a trade occurred. So whenever a tick is recorded at the exchange, it's time stamped with the exchange and then the kinetic servers will um, historically record the uh, bid, the best bid, and the best ask price at that point. Uh, this is really beneficial if you want to uh, take a look at maybe Forex prices. You can see the spread there uh, based on the ask and the bid prices and that are available from the Forex providers, uh, as well as using this uh, bid and ask information uh, for your type of trading. A lot of people will use this real-time bid and ask for uh, volume profile and things of that sort. Uh, there as well. But then we can also right click data series. We can change this to uh, the bid price here and we can uh, change that as well. You can see that it slightly alters it, not entirely. Uh, seeing as with the ES typically there's not much of a difference between the bid, the ask, and the last traded price. Uh, for things like Forex where there is more of a spread, you may see more variation in terms of the loading of this data. Now additionally, we have access to the uh, to multiple symbols. If I want to say uh, view Ford stock, I can go ahead and just type in the Ford symbol F. Go ahead and hit enter, and you see in the top left here it's loading, and you see the data. Now, typically we would actually want to view the last price for equities. We can change that back to last price uh, just by editing the settings. So the thing about uh, Kinetic is by providing you a lot of uh, data resources, uh, we're trying to facilitate the manipulation of the data uh, within the IntraTrader application so that it suits your trading. Uh, there's a there's vast array of um, trading styles out there and we're looking ultimately to to be a data source, a, a one-stop shop for being able to provide data uh, for your Ninja Trader experience. Ultimately, uh, I think that we've done an extraordinarily uh, good job in that sense, uh, especially at the price point that we've established uh, with the kinetic feed there as well. We'll get back to that again, but uh, you have access to these equities here. Uh, if we want to change this to say a five-minute chart here as well, we can go ahead and uh, select five minutes. Uh, that M is shorthand for five uh, for minutes. But then you have the ability. You can actually change to any type here. Um, but to see the full range of available charts, if you right click, select data series, uh, you can see here that our period type, we have uh, tick, volume, range, and second. And um, those are going to be your uh, tick based charts as well as the ones at the very bottom here, line, breakpoint, figure, Renko, Kagi. Um, so all of those types of charts are based on available tick data. But then you have minute data and then you have your daily data which uh, can be viewed as a day, a week, a month, or a year chart. Uh, you also have the, the flexibility to specify minute based intervals uh, on tick based data. Say you want to do like a, a five minute uh, or like a daily chart based on uh, component minute data. You can specify the number of minutes in a bar, uh, in a daily bar, things like that. So you can uh, mix and match how you use these component types of data uh, to ultimately affect how you end up charting things. So let's go ahead and uh, close out of that. And uh, just to show you here within the charting features, go ahead and select the Euro USD. We can quickly switch that symbol. Uh, we have access to any number of symbols. Just see an example, if I want to pull up uh, Palladium here, I can do so. But you'll notice when I do so, um, I'm using a pound sign for the front month versus, uh, in this case, uh, if we were to view like say 0613, let's go ahead and actually do that first. We can see the historical data for palladium here. If we were to select say a daily interval, uh, what you'll see is you'll notice there's actually um, segments here based on the individual front month that are a little thin based on when these contracts rolled over. Now Kinetic also offers a continuous contract for futures data. So if we type uh, PA here and then we go ahead and use those those uh, pound sign placeholders as a replacement for the 
designated front month, what we're telling the Kinetic servers is we want to view the continuous contract. And the continuous contract's uh, a great resource, maybe for back testing here as well, as well as viewing that available historical data with Kinetic. The idea is it takes the previous front months and it merges it into the current front month. So when we view this contract, we should see the price uh, there as well, um, but it looks like the um, the Palladium contract right now is not actually using the 0613. Uh, I believe the the current front month is 0413. That's uh, set to roll over uh, here shortly. But um, just to give you an example with this continuous contract, we now have more sense of historical data, and we don't have any of that those uh, thin bars where we would just see the line indicating that the open, the high, and the low, and the close are all at the same price level. What we see here is more of a range of daily data based on the fact that uh, historical data from previous front months is automatically merged based on the rollover date into the current front month. And that way what we can do is if we want to right click select data series, we can change this custom range down to say let's do 2001 here. Uh, actually let's do 2000 to. And um, once we do that, we'll go ahead and uh, left click OK. And you can see the uh, full range of the 10 years worth of data. Based on the scroll bar, you can see how much more data is going to be available. And you can also see how quickly that loaded uh, here as well when viewing your charts. Whenever you're scrolling back in time, you'll see this arrow in the top right. If I want to view the most current price, I can just left click that arrow. It takes me back uh, to the most current bar that's being generated uh, there as well. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you do this. Other things in NinjaTrader that you can do that uh, I don't really touch upon is you can actually right click and you can select indicators here. And when you select indicators, you can, uh, there's some particular indicators in here like um, power of volume indicators, like say I want to view a volume profile or something like that, I can actually apply that and then I can uh, include that with my chart. And I actually forgot to do so. So we'll go ahead and bring up our indicators. We'll select the volume profile here and then we'll go ahead and add that. We see our settings. So a lot of these uh, windows within NinjaTrader in terms of the settings are going to be similar in their configuration. You see all of the available indicators much like we had in our data series window, all the instruments and then all the indicator settings uh, when we're charting a specific or we have an indicator applied to a chart. Uh, we see it in the bottom left of the, uh, the um, settings window. Once I select OK here, uh, we actually add that. And as we start getting uh, real-time data, we'll start seeing volume profile update. And this little, if, uh, if you can see it, there's this little diamond on the current bar, and that indicates when this volume profile was updated. This relies on uh, real-time bid and ask data uh, to update. So maybe what we want to do is view like a 100 tick chart. Um, Usually these types of real-time indicators are, are more beneficial on these smaller intervals. And then what we'll see here is as we're working with a Ninja Trader, this volume profile is going to update with our uh, real-time bid and ask prices. It's going to show us a profile of uh, you know how much volume is sitting at certain price levels. Um, so that's a that's a great little indicator that's preloaded in Ninja Trader. And uh, you have about a hundred indicators you can apply directly to your charts. They're all calculated based on the available historical data that you're loading within the chart to you if you want to calculate a really long term uh, simple moving average or any type of moving average you can specify that type of range so if you want to view like a, a 500 um, moving average you can see uh, that type of um, that type of interval uh, based on the available historical data uh, within the uh, NinjaTrader application that's made available from the NinjaTrader servers now the charting features when we access this real time data is only uh, one of the features that's going to be uh, available to us. Let's go ahead and minimize this chart and let's go and take a look at some of the other features. One of the, the great features, and this kind of complements the available news data uh, that you have available within Kinetic is the news window. So if we go to file, if we select new, you see all of the available types of uh, windows within NinjaTrader that you have available and we'll select news here. And when I select news, what I get is essentially a, a streaming window. Uh, I don't know how many of you use RSS readers or things like that um, to to get articles and stuff that you want to read based on subscriptions. Um, think of it in that way in the sense that uh, these news feeds that are incoming uh, from the news sources from the Kinetic Feed are just updated in, a, in an RSS similar format. Um, 
one interesting thing here is uh, if you go to tools and then instrument manager, there's actually a list for RSS. So if you were to add instruments to this RSS list, uh, you can actually receive news updates uh, based on the symbols that are on that list there uh, specifically. So that's, uh, that's a cool little feature and that gets into some of the more advanced functionality uh, of this news window. But uh, similarly, what we have here uh, in terms of the the news window are all these various uh, news articles. Uh, it makes it a little bit difficult to go through this number, so you have the ability to actually filter as well as set up alerts. The alerts are going to be for future news articles. The filter is going to be for news articles that load uh, within our news window. So if I want to either edit the filter or the alerts, first thing I'm going to do in the top left of the news window is I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to select uh, either add filter or add alert. First let's go ahead and start with the filter. We'll go ahead and select add filter here. And what we can do at this point is we can just give it a name. Um, however we want to do this, uh, we can. So let's just call this um, demo. And we can either define keywords, maybe I'm looking for the beige book or something like that. I can define specific keywords or you can define a specific instrument list. So if you have that RSS feed uh, list enabled or any instrument list within NinjaTrader, in fact, you can just from that list actually select, say, uh, let's go ahead and let's grab the NASDAQ 100. Every single symbol that's on that list is then added as a keyword. That way, what I do then is if I left click OK, I can then select from my filter drop down the filter that we just created. What it does is it actually uh, removes any articles that are not relevant to that filter, uh, those keywords that we define. By using this demo filter, we actually eliminated all of those news articles that had uh, arrived uh, since we had connected to this real-time feed. Now, if I want to put this news window off to the side and review news articles as they come in, what I can do is I can set up an alert. It's very similar to setting up a filter uh, with one key difference. So let's go ahead and right click within the top left. Rather than selecting add filter, we're going to select add alert. When we select add alert, everything looks the same here. We can select demo. We can choose our NASDAQ 100 list. Uh, now the only difference is there's now an alert tab here and this alert tab enables me to uh, change the color for background and the foreground as well as uh, and so that's a visual property that you would see within the alerts window. And then uh, there's an ability to apply a sound file. If we left click that ellipses button, uh, the, the sounds that are involved in NinjaTrader are available. I can double click, say, alert one. And then if I apply that, I can select OK. And I can select demo here uh, as that alert that we created. As that's enabled now, I can say put this uh, alerts off to the side or this news window off to the side, and any time there's an incoming article relevant to that filter that we set up uh, as part of the alert, it would uh, make that the sound file that we uh, attached to it play. And the other thing that we can do is if we go to File, New, there's an Alerts window here, and we can view this Alerts window. Whenever there's an alert here, we would see the, uh, based on the priority and things like that, those other settings. And so you can have this as part of a workspace or something like that. Uh, and you can have alerts set up in various locations, not just the news window as well. The other place that you can set up alerts, and the primary place that most people will set up alerts, is within the Market Analyzer. And so at this point, let's go ahead and close this alert window. This is just basically an informational window based on alerts that you've set up uh, in other windows here. And so we don't need this really. It's just kind of a, a feature based on uh, the news window here. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then we'll go to File. Let's go ahead and select Net, New. And then uh, let's go ahead and select Market Analyzer. Now the Market Analyzer is a window where you can customize columns as well as set up uh, filters based on um, for scanning the market and things like that. And in many cases, uh, the market analyzer can be uh, thought of akin to a uh, quote sheet that you see with uh, with other types of applications here. You have a lot of flexibility. Now one thing I didn't mention already is the fact that with the kinetic data you have access to a large number of fundamental data fields. So if you're going to be scanning the market for uh, stock opportunities or something like that, you have a lot of um, fields that you can use as the uh, judgment for uh, whether you want to uh, place a trade on a specific um, 
and symbol. And the way you would edit this market analyzer is you go ahead and uh, right click and you have a columns option. Within your columns option, you can go ahead and select that and you see by default, we have uh, the symbol defined as well as the ask, the bid, and the last price. So those real-time ticks are being shown at this point in time uh, when we have added symbols. But you can add other symbols here as well. Um, in terms of the fundamental data fields that's going to be available to connect. So if I want to see like the, uh, let's do the calendar year high, we can view that. We can also see the date for that specifically. We can do the low and then the low date here. Uh, one thing I look at in terms of uh, equities is the uh, PE ratio. I imagine a lot of people do as well. And you can add that. Another really good one, and this is one that uh, a lot of people will ask for specifically when con uh, contacting Kinetic is net change. And this basically shows you uh, the, the ratio, like how well, whether the percent change, I should say. Um, but you can also modify the, the setting. You can do currency or points here. Um, and in most cases, people just leave it as percent. But this shows you uh, essentially how much the stock has changed from the previous day uh, in terms of the price. So once we left click OK here, uh, we can then see all of those columns. Now to take advantage of this right now, we want to go ahead and add symbols to the market analyzer. Go ahead and right click and we can add an instrument list. Let's just go ahead and stick with that NASDAQ 100 list here uh, as well. And once we add that, you can see all of these symbols are updating. Uh, we're actually missing uh, the last price here and what we can do is that's probably a setting if we right click we can select properties uh, we would want to and let's go ahead and uh, set this to US equities ETH here and let's go ahead and apply and we'll go ahead and select OK and that's a that's a setting you can modify here as well and so you see uh, depending on the, the stock, uh, we have access to all of these. Um, now the thing here that's going on uh, actually is the last traded price uh, will update. The market analyzer is only updating in real time. And so any time that we see the one of these columns flash yellow, uh, the market analyzer is going to show the last price. It doesn't show it until we've got an update. And since the market's closed, there's, n there's not a huge amount of uh, trading going on at this point. Uh, we don't get these other columns. Um, if we're reviewing real time and it was a, an open market day, uh, these columns would ultimately populate here as well. And uh, anytime there's an update within the market analyzer, we would actually see this column flash yellow. And that's a property that you can ultimately edit. Now the other things that we have here is if we're using this for uh, stock scanning or just reviewing our trading, is we have uh, filter and alert conditions that we can apply. So if we right click and then select columns, uh, on any of these available columns that we've added, and let's say I want to do like net change, I can define alert conditions. So if I select alert conditions, um, on the very right hand side of the columns option is an ellipses button. If I left click that ellipses button, I can now define our alert condition. I can select a new here uh, to create it. And once I do that, I can modify it. And so we can change the color. Let's do say, um, let's change this to, let's just do standard red and then we can do condition equals. Um, we're doing this on net change if it is greater than, uh, or actually since it's red, let's change that to less than. We'll set that as zero. Then we can do new here as well, and we can set an alert, say, for green when it's greater than zero uh, here. And we'll change that to greater than, and then we can go ahead and select OK. And now what we'll see is if we left click there, what will what will happen is all of these have updated. And you see now that Apple had a trade occur. We now have a last price for that. We can see the net change here as well. Um, based on the alerts that we've mod we've created, anything that's uh, greater than zero uh, should turn green. Anything that's less than zero should turn red. And we can also set up alerts. Um, similarly, we can right click again, select columns, uh, much like we did with the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, much like we did with the alert conditions, we can also do filter conditions. Now filter conditions is if you want to eliminate rows of data within this list. So I'm looking at 100 symbols. Maybe that's too difficult to review in entirety. Uh, what we can do is we can define these filter conditions. Uh, if we do hide row value is greater than zero, uh, 
we can select that, select OK, and then we can apply that. Now, once we've um, created these filter conditions, what we can do is we need to enable it. So we'll go ahead and uh, right click on the market analyzer and select our row filter. You'll notice now that my Apple stock is gone, um, and that's because the row filter is uh, is working and has disabled it based on the net change column. Uh, there as well. And so as we're receiving these updates, what we would see are only the symbols that are relevant to the types of uh, conditions that we've entered uh, within our market analyzer. And just based on the uh, real-time data that you have, you have a lot of flexibility in how you can manipulate this uh, for your own trading. Um, like I said we're a little bit earlier, talking about uh, manipulating the data for your trading. Uh, these market metrics uh, within the market analyzer are uh, incredibly beneficial to, to, that, to that end uh, specifically. Now the other things that we have and you can view these other items is if you go to file, if you go to new and then uh, select we have our static superdome. Uh, the static superdome is a window for order entry and what a depth of the market. So if I select uh, the ES symbol, what I see here is the yellow field showing me the last traded price. I also see that best ask as well as that best bid. But it also shows me the depth of market up to five levels. Uh, that's a setting within NinjaTrader. There is more extensive market depth data available. So if I were to go to File, select New, and then grab the Level 2 window here, uh, what I can do is I can right click, I can select the instrument, and then I can grab that ES symbol here. And I can compare it. Now you'll notice here as well that I have, rather than just the five levels of data, I've got a full 10 levels. And this is the full extent that the CME exchange um, where the ES contract trades specifically. Uh, and so with the market depth options available in Kinetic, you'll get whatever data the exchanges make available. Uh, for those CME exchanges specifically, you're looking at about 10 levels uh, of depth. I do know some go up to 20. Um, off the top of my head, I don't recall which, uh, which particular markets they are, uh, but in most cases, the market depth that's available is going to be uh, the full extent that's available within the level 2 window. Um, because the limitation within the Superdome is just a five levels, one of the uh, other great little features you have of NinjaTrader is this ability to link windows. If we wanted to select the link color of cyan, I believe is as it's called in NinjaTrader, we can specify that by left clicking the linked option and then we select the linked. Now if I were to change the symbol in the Superdome, you'll notice the level two window is going to update here as well we can select that as well. And then one of the uh, other great little features here is if we pull up uh, NinjaTrader and then we grab our market analyzer, if we were to link the market analyzer, uh, rather than if we were to change the symbol here within the Superdome, uh, what would happen is it would update in the level two window. Um, because the static Superdome doesn't support equities trading, what we may want to do is go ahead and close that out and we'll go to File, we'll go to New, and then we'll grab the Dynamic Superdome. Uh, dynamic Superdome and the Static Superdome are essentially the same thing, uh, it's just how the price ladder display works. Uh, that's the primary difference. If anyone has any questions about that, let me know. I'd be glad to answer those. Right now we're going to select the ES contract. We're going to go ahead and link it again, make sure we get the right color. Then we'll grab the Market Analyzer and didn't mean to do that go full screen with that. Um, but in any case, what we'll go ahead and do is if we were to select a symbol now on the uh, same market analyzer, the result is is that it actually changes the symbol in both the dome as well as the level 2 window. And you can see that level 2 data is available uh, for the NASDAQ exchange here, which Adobe's at. And then we can uh, also do Amazon here as well. Uh, we can view that. We can see that price data. And we see the uh, NASDAQ open view, which is a subscription exchange. Uh, available uh, with Kinetic here in that level 2 window. So you can link all these windows. You can actually configure all these various components of NinjaTrader as part of a workspace there uh, as well. And uh, what that enables you to do is uh, essentially work within your various configuration uh, to access the data as it's going to be most convenient for you. Uh, and then you have uh, all of these available tools uh, at your disposal. If we go to File, uh, New, and you can see the uh, the other windows. There aren't uh, too many that we didn't cover. Uh, the strategy analyzer is a really good one uh, in the sense that the this is what you would use for back testing if you want to uh, 
code, if you've coded a strategy, what you can do is, and we can actually back test, we have sample um, strategies here, like sample ATM strategy. We can base it on the types of data that's available, like tick data here. We want to compare it. Um, we can do 100, and we can specify the, the time here, uh, keeping in mind that we have about 120 days worth of tick data, and we can access all that uh, specifically, and we can see kind of how, uh, in this case, a sample strategy would work, or any kind of custom strategy that you would. Um, the, one of the great benefits of NinjaTrader is that, is that it is um, coded in C-sharp, meaning that you have a lot of flexibility in uh, adding indicators as well as strategies to it as by uh, custom programming uh, there as well. And the strategy analyzer enables you to uh, backtest any coding that you may do uh, based on the available uh, kinetic data. You also have the ability to optimize strategies and then uh, run walk forward optimizations, things like that. Then you can apply your strategies to the real time data that's incoming, you know, as a uh, forward progress test. So all of these features that are available within IndiaTrader are just uh, enhanced by the uh, excess of data that you have uh, with the kinetic uh, data feed uh, specifically. And so in terms of the in terms of the NinjaTrader application, uh, if anyone has any questions on any of the functionality uh, of that, uh, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, what I'll go ahead and do is uh, get to the pricing options. Uh, what we've talked about here and what we've done with the intraday data uh, is basically what's available uh, to me with a uh, in this case, it would be about a $60 subscription because you'd be looking at like the CME waiver as well as equities data for the NYSE and NASDAQ exchanges. Uh, each of those are currently $5, but uh, the exchanges informed us not too long ago that they're increasing their prices to $6. Um, and so that actually gets us into the pricing aspects of the Kinetic Data Feed. So whenever you are looking to subscribe to Kinetic, what's going to happen is you're going to be taken to a page that looks like this. You have the option, if you select the Get It Now option, to go ahead and download an IndiaTrader and access that end of day data. If you select the subscribe option, you're going to be taken to a page that break down, breaks down into four different components. Um, the first part of the page is going to be the basic service. Everything that we've talked about here uh, within the, the uh, presentation is going to be included with this basic service. It's actually pre-selected, so you don't need to include anything if you're just looking to access that historical data or any of these market metrics that are included, that news feed uh, there as well, as well as that fundamental data we were talking about within the market analyzer. That's all included with that basic service. That cost of the basic service is ultimately $50 per month. Um, I invite anyone to compare it to other data providers uh, that cost uh, d directly and specifically with what you get uh, and the features of Kinetic. And so everything that we've talked about here uh, hi are highlighted uh, on the features page. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at the, uh, the features page there. But then also what we have is uh, the optional upgrades. If you are doing extensive uh, stock scanning in the market analyzer, you may want to increase the number of symbols that you can scan at a given time um, from 100, that's included with the basic service, to either 200 or 500. Uh, a lot of people who are using the, the market analyzer in a very robust capacity uh, will ultimately increase the symbols. They can view up to 500 different symbols real time. Um, you can still view all the available symbols with Kinetic. It's not a set lit, uh, list of symbols, it's just at a time. So uh, in many cases, that 100 symbols is sufficient for most people. Um, but you have the ability to upgrade if you'd like. Uh, market depth is going to be included as an optional upgrade there as well. So that level 2 window would uh, ultimately de be dependent uh, on the market depth data. If you're using a data, uh, if you're using Kinetic in addition to a data only provider, I'm sorry, uh, to a broker, then market depth typically will come through in NinjaTrader based on the ability to connect to multiple brokers at the same time uh, through whichever uh, connection has that data. And so it's not necessary to maybe include the market depth with Kinetic if you are supplementing your brokerage data. That brokerage uh, data should include market depth data as well. And then you see the premium news fees. I mentioned APP, uh, AP online news. Uh, the fly on the news, the market watch, and then midnight trader news, I believe, was one uh, that I didn't mention. The other three I had. But these are news feeds, um, depending on the, uh, the content you're looking for, that you may want to add as a uh, premium upgrade uh, there as well. And in addition to those optional upgrades, uh, what we have is uh, your, just your, your stocks and futures data um, there as well. 
I just wanted to go back real quick there. But you have your stock market, your uh, your stocks, your futures. Um, you can see here the uh, NYSE market and the various exchanges that are available. Now, if you were going to participate in the CME waiver program, whereby you get the real-time data uh, to the CBOT, the C, uh, CME, the COMEX, or the NYMEX exchange at no additional cost, by selecting any one of those, what you're going to see happen is you're going to get an option to participate in the CME Group Globex Exchange Fee Waiver Program. Um, you would want to select that option so that you aren't billed for the exchanges. What happens is you validate the exchange when creating the connection within NinjaTrader. Um, just to show you what that looks like, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to uh, NinjaTrader again. And we'll go to File, we'll go to New, uh, I'm sorry, we'll go to Tools and then we'll go to Account Connections here. If we go to Kinetic, we can uh, highlight it and we can select Change and then Next. And then we'll go through the process. What we see here is an option to participate in the CME waiver program. Uh, this option, when you have a live license with NinjaTrader, is available selection. You can see right now, because it's grayed out, that I'm using a free license within NinjaTrader. So um, the CME, basically, they've decided to offer their data, uh, their real-time data, at no cost if you can demonstrate that you are able to trade on the exchange. As someone who can trade on that exchange, uh, you have the option then to participate in the waiver program. You would select that option and then proceed. This other option here, use back adjusted data, applies to continuous contracts. Um, when you are using the continuous contracts, again, we talked about the palladium symbol uh, with the pound sign uh, as a replacement for the uh, specific front month. If you set that to use back adjusted data, then the there would be an adjustment made from when one rollover occurred to the next. Um, typically, that's just some, some offset value to create a more streamlined looking chart uh, so that it corresponds to the current real-time uh, data that's available. You can also choose not to back adjust it. That way you would see, um, an, an, rather than a normalized view of the historical data, you would see um, various differences between when rollover actually occurred. Uh, and so that's that's a settings that you have available to you uh, within the kinetic connection here as well. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, when you're subscribing, you would want to select that so that later you can validate the waiver uh, when you are able to validate the waiver uh, after having subscribed. And ultimately, we get a page that looks like this uh, here. Now, just kind of highlight this, give you a better example. I uh, want to go ahead and uh, grab the, the actual website and uh, show you here real quick. What you see is, uh, like we had, we had our end of day data as well as our real time data. It shows you what's available. We can left click on the subscribe button here and what it does is it takes us to that page um, that we reviewed in uh, segments. We have the basic service aspect, it covers what's included with that, your optional upgrades, uh, your Forex data and your stocks and futures data. Um, selecting any of these, once we select the CBOT exchange, you'll notice now that that group exchange waiver program came up. I can then select that and then I just go ahead and hit next. Um, professional status, um, if you're SEC registered or qualified, um, an investment advisor or anything like that. Uh, typically, the exchanges have different costs for non-professionals and professionals. Um, that generally only applies to equities data, uh, specifically. Uh, but if you end up having to become a professional, you may need to uh, contact us directly. And if you need to contact Kinetic, you can do so at the uh, following email address, uh, or you can do so directly. Uh, at support at kinetic uh, dot com and uh, there's a support section here and you can actually see from the kinetic website there's a support section uh, if we proceed through the uh, subscription process what we get here are the exchange agreements and these agreements are based on the data that's included historically uh, you would need to make sure that you select these an electronic signature is basically just your typed uh, your type name and then uh, information related to your professional status the exchanges actually will audit us based on the uh, exchange uh, the subscribers uh, to make sure there aren't any professionals that are just using this data for whatever reason.
Uh, and so um, that's why all this information, these are the actual agreements that uh, we submit to the exchanges when we are providing uh, the services that we offer. And then once we fill all this out, you can see it's, uh, it's fairly lengthy. Uh, I encourage you to read all this uh, and so on. And then once you get there, you can hit next. I can't actually proceed because I haven't filled it out. But when you hit next, you'll be taken to the last page, and that's just where you inf enter your billing information. Uh, once you've entered your billing information, <laughs> All you would need to do is submit, and then uh, the entire process is automated. You get an email with your account ID and the password. Once you have that information, you're able to go ahead and then just connect. Um, because it's fully automated, once you decide to subscribe to Kinetic, it takes really no more than 10 minutes to complete, uh, and you can be connected and up and running um, right after that. You're good to go. Uh, with the kinetic feed, we try and streamline this process uh, as much as possible, whether it's the subscription uh, options here or uh, the support options that are available. I got an option about leaving this page here um, because I didn't complete the subscription, but you can uh, do just standard account management stuff, uh, password reset, update your billing, stuff like that. Um, cancel your service. This is great. Um, this, is a, this is a big selling point, I think, of Kinetic uh, as well, is there's no long-term commitment or anything like that. Uh, it's just billed monthly. So you can subscribe to Kinetic. So maybe you're just getting started with NinjaTrader. You're kind of feeling out which brokers you want to go with. You can subscribe to Kinetic as a data-only provider. And when you're ready to trade live and you get your brokerage data, uh, you can cancel the service. There's, no, there's not any term of commitment. It's just billed monthly, one, and, uh, one month at a time on the first of the month. Uh, and so you have that option to cancel at any time. Uh, and so you can try out the Kinetic data just you know, for one month, see if it works out for you. i um, confident generally when you try it that uh, you will subscribe uh, for an extended period of time. But you do have that option to, subscribe, uh, to, to cancel the service if ultimately uh, it's not something that works for you. Uh, understanding that, you know, Kinetic may not necessarily uh, be right for everyone. Uh, that being the case then, uh, I had included the feature site. Everything we talked about here is kind of reiterated, uh, just kind of wrap up uh, here. But that actually uh, covers everything I wanted to go over in terms of the kinetic feed. Uh, and that being the case, uh, if there are any questions, I would encourage you to uh, put those in the room. Uh, if something comes to you afterwards, um, go ahead and uh, send those questions either through the kinetic support site here there's a submit a request option or you can send an email directly to support at kinetic.com uh, we're more than happy to answer any um, sales or support questions you may have uh, related to the uh, kinetic feed and through those channels uh, and I want to thank everyone here at this point for uh, taking the time out of the trading day for joining me uh, to learn about the kinetic advantage um, if you do have any questions I hope to hear from you so thanks again everyone uh, thank you to Big Mike for this uh, tremendous opportunity uh, I hope you uh, learned a lot about the kinetic feed and I hope you also have a great day all right Ryan uh, there are a few questions and we're, we're kind of running short on time so we'll try to get through these quickly Sorry for the background noise. My dog is chewing on a bone. Uh, Rhino wants to know, does it need a live license with NinjaTrader to get Kinetic? You don't need a live license to get Kinetic. Um, as an independent data-only provider, you can access the data um, using the free version. Now, if you want to participate in the waiver program um, to supplement whatever data you get from your broker, that's when you would need a live license. But okay. um, absolutely not. You don't, you don't need a live license. Okay. He also has a question. He says the situation with the end of day free data is that you cannot get the regular trading hour session only. How can he get only the regular trading session for the, for the um, free data? You know, with that, the end of day data with Kinetic is the extended trading hours only. Um, there's not a way to change that within the daily interval. If you had a subscription to Kinetic, you could use the component minute data to generate um, a regular trading hours. Um, session based on the, the, the minute data, um, just based on what's available uh, from that interval. But as it is, the daily data, uh, its own type of data, does use the extended trading hours uh, for that. All right, Raymond is asking, uh, why aren't the, all the metrics, all the market breadth symbols listed in the instrument manager? Instrument manager. That's really a function of the NinjaTrader installation. Um, the instrument manager is uh, a fairly large database. Uh, if we were to add all these market metrics, um, it would ultimately 
increase the installation process with NinjaTrader. Um, the process to add a market metric is fairly straightforward within NinjaTrader. I would be glad to help Raymond out specifically with that if he wants to get in touch with me at uh, kinetic.com. Okay. Ronald is asking, what is the route of the ES data from CME to the individual user, and is Kinetic faster than Zenfire? I think he's asking where are the servers located physically. Right, right. Um, our, our servers are uh, centrally located um, in Omaha um, and Des Moines. So like I, when I was talking about the redundancy, there's actually two separate locations. Um, so they're routed from the exchange to those servers, then uh, directly to you. Uh, comparison sake to Zenfire, I can't really say. Uh, in terms uh, of direct comparison. Uh, one of the things you may want to do is if you, and if anyone wants to know this specifically as well, um, you can send me an email at uh, Kinetic uh, as well and I can give you the IP addresses that we use for our servers and you can ping those uh, compared to whatever is available with uh, your broker and you can compare the, uh, the response time there as well for a, a, a you know, ballpark speed test. Okay. Reese asks, do you have to have a broker in order to participate in the CME feed waiver program? Uh, yes, it would need to be a supported broker as well. So since we have the uh, Kinetic website up, uh, if we go to the features page, there's a um, link specifically on the CME exchanges and it details the supported brokerages. Um, it's really based on the technology and so there's a lot of different brokers you can use that uh, do rely on CQG or PAD systems, trading technologies, uh, and Zenfire there as well, as well as um, Rhythmic, uh, which is typically known as Vision within NinjaTrader, uh, but then Interactive Brokers and MB Trading. So that's the full extent of the brokers that are supported uh, with the CME waiver program. Okay. Tom says he has the enrollment page up. He's clicked on the exchange, clicked on a exchange, but no pop-up has been presented to give him the option for the fee waiver. Um, it, it depends on the exchange he selected. It's only going to relate to the CME, the CBOT, the NYMEX, or the COMEX exchanges. So if we pull that page up here, um, if we were to say select the NYSE exchange, I don't have that option to participate in the waiver. It's only the exchanges that are included in the waiver that you would select uh, here as well. Um, you don't actually need to select any of the exchanges that are included with the waiver when participating in it because of what I was showing you within the connection. Uh, option there um, to validate when you are creating the connection. When you validate it within NinjaTrader, it automatically adds these exchanges. So you don't actually need to select that with, within your subscription process, but uh, that option would only come up when selecting uh, one of the supported exchanges as part of the waiver program. So I, I don't know which exchange he's selecting, but I'm guessing that's probably the issue. Leon says he's trading the E-mini S&Ps as well as some Forex, uh, also uh, NASDAQ, et cetera. How, do, how does he qualify for the CME waiver? Um, I guess he wants to know what the process is to qualify. Um, with Kinetic, it's, it's really straightforward. It's, it's just subscribing and then validating. Um, the information, the items that you need prior to subscribing to ultimately qualify uh, would be a live NinjaTrader license as well as a supported brokerage account. So if he already has um, those two items, then he can just go through the subscription process as we kind of outlined here and then uh, validate it there as well. If he doesn't have those items, um, you know, let me know. I'd be a lot happy to work with him in terms okay. of getting started. Raymond says he uh, uses Miris features and he's trading the dollar uh, DX but he loads kinetic data first because he needs equity data and because of that he doesn't see any DX futures data unless he loads uh, kinetic last. Right, that's, um, that's a function of the fact that the kinetic server, uh, the kinetic doesn't support the ICE exchange data and, and a function of uh, NinjaTrader and how it pulls the data um, based on your primary connection first. If it's pulling it from your primary connection and the symbols supported, um, and it's a, it's based on asset class futures uh, of Forex, it's going to rely solely on that primary connection. So when you're connecting to Kinetic first, because the ICE exchange isn't supported, um, it's not going to load the DX futures data and it's not going to go to the secondary feed because Kinetic technically supports uh, futures data. Um, 
as a side note, uh, I don't know how many of the other of the uh, individuals who attended today have maybe attended the NinjaTrader 8 webinar. Um, there is an expected enhancement that would enable you to to configure your connections in such a way that uh, that should no longer be an issue. You can dictate where uh, the data comes from based on uh, your primary as well as your secondary connections based on the okay. asset class. So um, that's something that I, I think people are looking forward to. All right, and here's the last question. Tom says, do we need to select multiple feeds we want data for or just one of them and then the wafer kicks in with all the feeds in the wafer package? Uh, that's a great question um, in the sense that you don't need to select all of them. In fact, um, kind of highlighting what I had mentioned, you don't need to select any of them. When you validate and participate in the waiver program, all of the exchanges that fall under that um, waiver program umbrella are added automatically. Um, as a side note, one of the things you see here, and this is kind of interesting to me, is the Dubai exchange. Um, there's a Globex uh, option with the Dubai exchange that's included with that waiver program. It's just no one really trades that exchange very much, but um, it does encompass all of those exchanges, so you only need to select one or you don't have to select any. Uh, as long as you validate within NinjaTrader, it's going to add the whole lot of them. Okay. All right, so if anybody has any further questions for Ryan, then uh, you can uh, contact them through kinetic.com. And Ryan, I appreciate your time today, and I'll be posting the recording of the webinar on BMT sometime tomorrow. I thank you, uh, everyone, for attending. I thank you, Big Mike, for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right, bye.